In today's adventure, I will be flying over wildlife in South Africa, and then an active volcano in Iceland, all in the same afternoon. How is that possible? Through remote drone travel where I'll actually be controlling these drones from across the globe in the comfort of my own office here in Minneapolis. And if that sounds slightly crazy, you are not wrong. I had a few doubts about how well this could possibly work, but the tech that goes into making this happen is frankly incredible and one of the coolest things I've done in recent memory. Before we take to the skies, let's chat with Michelle, the Chief Marketing Officer of NatureEye, the company that's making all of this possible. NatureEye is a platform that enables people to fly drones remotely in just incredible iconic locations around the world. A person can schedule a flight, go on to the internet, all they really need is a browser and a, an internet connection, and they can engage with a guide and, and fly a drone. So they get a guided tour of the location. Um, there's a pilot on the ground who sets up the drone, gets it ready to take off, um, and is there to just help guide them through the experience, tell them about the places that they're seeing. So the customer can choose to fly the drone themselves or they can just get a guided tour. It's all real time, remote, but engaging with a guide directly in real time. As someone that's flown drones, I was slightly skeptical about how easy it would be to navigate a drone remotely without a typical controller. But the process was surprisingly easy and natural. If you've ever played video games using a keyboard and mouse, the controls here are quite similar, using the industry standard WASD for movement, another set of keys to go higher or lower, one to zoom in and out, and another to take photos of what you're seeing. And if that's not something you've done before, no worries. It's easy to pick up, and NatureEye has made this virtually dummy-proof with integrated tech that won't let you fly too close to anything fragile or outside the allowed flying area. And the whole time you'll be chatting with your guide, who has boots on the ground at whatever location you're at, who can help you or take over at any time. So I think we're about to see a very intriguing family of hippos. I love the Oh, wow. And here at the Antioch Reserve, a family of hippos has decided to pose for the camera. So the baby is always on on a, on an adult's back because uh, it's too deep for him to to stand, and unfortunately they cannot swim. So they're always on top, um, getting supported by the the adult. So I heard a buffalo the, the day before yesterday. Um, it's always like a big surprise box you open every day you fly because you don't really know what you'll get. So we do have, I can tell you what we, what we saw with the nature of flights. There's buffalo, giraffe, sable, which is an antelope, nyala, which is an antelope, zebra, uh, wildebeest. Another skepticism I had was about the latency of this entire process. The time that it takes for my keyboard input to transmit to the drone to then take the action that I wanted to happen. Generally, if this doesn't happen fast, the experience will not be good. Not only was it fast, I'd call it near real time. If you couldn't tell, I'm really excited about what NatureEye is doing for a number of reasons. But I think one of the most exciting things is what this can do for education, and namely, kids in school K through 12. Gen Z and Gen Alpha have grown up with iPads, VR, AI, and drones in a way that prior generations didn't, and I don't think the education system has caught up. I don't think that textbooks should be replaced, but imagine how much more engaging it would be to learn about the ancient city of Machu Picchu by flying over it while getting to control your experience like a video game. We, as soon after we launched last, late last year, we heard a lot of people saying that they really wanted to, to gift this for their children's classrooms, um, that this would be a perfect experience for students. And so we listened to that feedback and we, we tried it out. Um, I, I had a flight at my daughter's school uh, I think early this year in January over the Antioch Reserve where you flew in South Africa. Wow. I mean, the second graders were just amazed being able to see hippos and antelope and giraffes and zebras. And we realized that we really have something here. We actually launched our school program in March together with the Jackson Wild Foundation. We've been, you know, having great experiences with kids at, at schools ever since. So we've, we've learned that, yeah, this is an amazing um, opportunity for anyone from you know kindergarten all the way up through high school. Um, it's a virtual field trip, essentially. So it's it's hard now for schools to go on real field trips. You know, budgets are limited, and um, this is a pretty affordable way for a classroom to be able to see something that they would just never be able to see. I certainly wish that was an option while I was in school. 
And on top of that, traveling is not cheap. And while this tech won't replace the experience of actually visiting certain places, this is opening up the doors of accessibility to a larger audience that would not be possible any other way. Just minutes after we touched back down from our aerial safari, I'm back in the air just moments away from an active volcano in Grindavik, Iceland. And this is the most likely uh, site of the next eruption. So if you're lucky, it might just start. <laughs> That'd be really good for our video. <laughs> Could we just, can someone go kick it or something and see if it'll go? I think one of the coolest things about these remote drone tours is that it opens up the possibility for people all over the world to experience significant events in real time. The volcano erupted in December and our guide Johan, who is flying up in the north in a, an area called the Heverfjell volcano, ended up um, going down south to where the volcano was erupting and we were able to do drone flights as the volcano was erupting there. Um, we've, we were actually flying a drone live when the crater opened up right near the town of Grindavik. And um, we were doing a live stream with a geologist that we partner with named Sean Wilsey. And a crater opened up and lava started flowing out toward the town. Um, and so we were watching live on, on YouTube when that happened. It was pretty incredible. The town was evacuated, everyone was safe. Thankfully, the, the eruption didn't last very long in that area, and it, it did unfortunately burn down three houses, but it stopped after that. Um, but yeah, flying over the volcano is really incredible. Since then, we've been able to secure all the permits that enable us to fly there pretty much at any time. So as you know, you took a flight. It's not erupting right now, but it is expected to erupt any day. And yeah. when that happens, we'll be flying over it, and customers can come and purchase a flight. While I was able to experience two of their drone tours, that is not all they have to offer. Our new location called Oxu Reserve in Kyrgyzstan, mm -hmm. we partnered with the Snow Leopard Foundation. Um, and so there are, you know, endangered snow leopards in that area, but it's a beautiful location um, right in this river valley between two mountains, one called, being called the Vladimir Putin Peak. And uh, you can fly and we're hoping that soon someone will be one of the first people to spot a snow leopard from a drone in that area. I mean, yeah. about 10 years ago, Planet Earth spotted, took the first footage of a snow leopard from a drone, I believe it was, in the area. The tech stack here is already impressive, but Nature Eye has some pretty incredible plans to advance this further in the near future. We're looking into technology, AI, augmented reality, uh, that enables people to be able to take a flight and then see on the screen more information about what they're viewing. So being able to click on an object and see, you know, what what is it? Uh, what type of animal is it, for example, using just AI and augmented reality technology to be able to augment that experience and make it just more immersive. Another thing that's critically important to us is not disturbing the wildlife. Uh, we are a conservation oriented company. Um, that's kind of our roots. So we are um, flying over wildlife, but we're flying high enough that they don't even know that we're there in most cases. We give up to half of the revenue generated from each of these flights back to the local locations. In many cases, they are nature reserves. So we give up to half of the revenue from our flights back to them. 